So Jason over at the Low Noise Jason Skills channel has put together the Cassette Tag 2023. Now I'll be tackling this one by answering 20 plus questions with tapes from my own collection, most of which never shown on my channel before. We'll cover rock, metal, punk, experimental, electronic, you name it. So not the usual today, but it should be fun. Stick around. So first off is a tape from 2022, which I actually can't answer because I hadn't bought a tape that year. So it's on with question number two, which is a punk or new wave tape. So punk it is. This is Black Flag with the first four years released in 1983 by SST Records. It's a compilation of EP and single tracks during the pre-Rollins era of the band. So Johnny Bob, aka Keith Morris, as well as Chavo and Dez. Set for you. There. And cover with inside and J card insert with a whole bunch of flyers from the band. Number three is a metal or hard rock tape. I'm going to say, let's not only go metal, let's also go demo. This is the Nuclear Assault demo from 1986. I actually have no idea where I bought this. Thought it could have been through tape trading back in the 1980s, which I did a little bit of, but I just don't remember. It's been way too long. Uh, not much in here. Um, like an old Sony tape. But we do have a track listing there for you. How many tracks is that? six even get their address at the bottom which i probably think is not valid anymore but there it is nuclear assault demo 1986 definitely one of my favorite demos that i have on tape for sure number four is a tape still sealed well i actually still have a maxell tape a blank tape it is a maxell high bias xl2 audio cassette uh, i've never opened it um as you know, I recently moved, maybe like four or five months ago, so I unearthed stuff that was in boxes for like 30 years. This is one of the things I found. I was like, this is amazing. I never opened this tape ever. So there it is. It's even got that guy there from the ads. Very cool. Um, I also have another sealed tape. This one is Stompbox. It is the No Woods Casingle from 1994, released by Columbia Records. Uh, the Stompbox kind of came and went. I did see them live back in, I think, 90... 293 93 sounds right there's the back of it for you yeah pretty interesting number five most experimental tape well, i'm gonna go a little bit local here in a band that doesn't exist anymore this is black hairy tongue this is their self-titled demo from 1991 uh, the band existed from 1990 to 1992 were definitely experimental with an almost industrial sludge vibe to them uh, they were from my hometown here in burlington vermont and I likely got this at one of their shows. I went to quite a few of them when I could. Very shortly lived band, but they were really incredible live. In fact, there's the spine there. Black Hairy Tongue, great name. Um, there is a website out there with all of these tracks on MP4. You can basically seek it out if you want to. Nothing on the reverse there for you. But yeah. And it looks like there's an address here that probably also isn't valid anymore. But there you go. All right, number six, a tape from the 1980s. So rather than pick any 80s metal tape from my collection, which how exciting would that be? I went with the Radio Rock Classic and also the tape I've owned the longest. Thinking I was about 13 when I bought this copy, either in 1981 or 1982. Of course, this is Pat Benatar with her second studio album, Crimes of Passion, released in 1980 by Chrysalis Records. Great album. Probably her best. I mean, the first album is fine, but if you take Heartbreaker and we live for love off of it, it's rather okay at best. Cries of Passion is way more consistent and hardly has a weak track on it. There's the cassette for you. Right there. B-side. And J-card with the track listings there. Number seven is a hip-hop or R&B tape, or the closest thing that I have. Of course, I don't have any of either genre on cassette, but the closest I get to hip-hop is this metal project by a hip-hop artist. 
This is the self-titled debut album from Body Count, released in 1992 by Sire Records. It's a strange mix of rap metal and almost crossover thrash at times, but also with a ridiculous sense of humor, though. Some of the humor seems, shall we say, rather unintentional. The singer, of course, is Ice-T, who was already an established rapper back then. Uh, this is also the original version of the album. It contains the track Cop Killer, which got him in a bit of hot water with even the Vice President of the United States, among other people. And the track was replaced with a new version of an older Ice-T track called Freedom of Speech with guest spoken parts by ex-Dead Kennedy vocalist Jella B. Afra. So this cassette might be a bit of a collector's item. Who knows? Anyways, there's the tape for you. Right there. And there. And the J card, it's a nice shot, gunman right there, and bolts out to this, on one side, and that on the other. Number eight is a tape you have on CD or vinyl as well. Well, let's go with all three formats. This is Metallica with their Garage Days re-revisited EP. It was released in 1987 by Elektra Records. This is the first release with then-new bassist Jason Newstead. Uh, the EP is a collection of cover songs, though if you didn't know that, you might think these were actually Metallica songs, as they do really make these tracks their own. I've always felt that way, even since I bought this album. Except there. There. J card with track listing and all of that. Of course, I do have this on all three formats. I also have this on CD. There you go. With the reverse and the disc. There you go. And of course, I also have this on OG vinyl. Here it is. And right there for you as well. Number nine is your most expensive or valuable tape. I did check this one on Discogs. It's currently going for about $54.99. Um, it has gone up and down a bit over the years, but that's the current high for it on Discogs. Anyways, this is Death with their fifth studio album, Individual Thought Patterns. It was released in 1993 by Relativity Records. Amazing lineup on this one. Not only Chuck, but Andy LaRock on guitar, Steve DiGiorgio on bass, and Gene Hoagland on drums. Most OG Death releases are pretty sought after, but I'd imagine the tapes in good condition might be tough to find. So there you go. There is the tape itself. There you go there. And we'll pull out the J card folded out for you and full lyrics and credits as well. Number 10, a techno electronic or synth tape. So let's go electronic, at least of sorts. This is Fetish 69 with their debut album Antibody. It was released in 1993 by Nuclear Blast Records. They are an Austrian band and perhaps jumping a bit on the ministry bandwagon with their blending of industrial and electronic music and metal. Sometimes upbeat, sometimes sludgy. In fact, it's kind of all over the place. Um, if you like early clutch or especially screw, you'd likely dig Fetish 69. Classic Nuclear Blast fonts there. And on this the other side. And we'll fold this out here. There's our J card folded out in the front. And then the incredibly hard track listing to read right there for you. Number 11, a tape you bought at a show. So this is the tree demo material it's from 1991 i think or earlier tree is a hardcore band from boston um, i bought this from their bass player jake in the parking lot of the channel club in boston which no longer exists um, according to him there were only three copies of this at the time and they needed beer money so i bought it it was also their third show ever opening for metal bands which was the reason i was there but i also dug tree's performance so i snagged the demo basically that's my story you can see 
I basically just wrote tree demo on it. It was another tape at the time. Don't know what it was. And I did make this case. It didn't come with uh, track listing, but I knew the tracks. So there it is. Number 12 is a tape with a colored shell. This one was actually kind of tough to find because I was looking for a tape that was entirely one color, uh, but I did find one that's partially colored. Uh, this is Black Sabbath with their 16th studio album, Dehumanizer, released in 1992 by Reprise Records. Here we get the brief return of Ronnie James Dio on vocals, so basically the Mob Rules lineup. Fantastic album and one of my favorites from this band. And the tape is partially blue. It's as close as my collection gets to a colored tape. Here's the other side of it. Fantastic album. I did buy this on cassette first. So this is my first uh, format for this album. I do have it on vinyl as well. There's the J card. And more lyrics and such there. Number 13 is an import tape from a country other than your own. Let's go with ACDC. This is their debut studio album, High Voltage, released in 1975. Uh, in the U.S., it did come out on Atlantic Records, and it does have an Atlantic branding on it, but this isn't a U.S. release. Rather, this one came from Greece. Uh, back in the 1980s, I believe somewhere in the mid-80s, my aunt went on a trip to Greece, and she brought me back this tape, knowing that I liked the band, that I might get a kick out of having a foreign release. And it is very foreign. You can even see the Greek writing right there. In fact, it's all Greek to me. <sighs> Anyways, cassette right there. Let's say two. And the J card has very little on this side. There's some stuff right there, but also track listing right there on the other side. Pretty cool. I think this is one of my very few foreign releases I got on cassette back in the 80s. Uh, I do cherish this one quite a bit. My aunt is no longer with us. So it's a little bit of a memory I have of her. ACDC. So number 14, will you buy more tapes in 2023? Why and why not? The answer is nope. <laughs> uh, typically, I don't buy tapes that often, but I have enough of them from my youth. So, you know, there you go. Moving on to number 15, what do you play your tapes on? Well, I used to play them on this boombox right here. I got for my 21st birthday back in 1989 from my dad, but it stopped working. Um, I am looking to get a console deck for my stereo in the near future, so that'll be what I play them on going forward. And I have been a little bit interested in cassettes lately, just not excessively so. So there you go. Number 16 is show a mixtape or a blank tape. Well, since I already showed a blank tape and a sealed one at that, let's do a mixtape. This is Thrash Metal 3. Yeah, that's what we call it anyways. Uh, probably made in 1988, given the track listing. Um, I'm not sure if I made this or my buddy Eric did. Uh, we tended to make mixtapes for each other of bands we discovered. It was kind of a quicker way to sort of introduce each other to new bands and the like. It still says Thrash Metal 3. I can't find one or two anywhere for some reason. Uh, but it is on a classic Memorex cassette there. Look, similar on the B side. And the track listing here, let's see, bands from uh, Death Angel, Megadeth, Overkill, looks like Metallica, Exorcist, Slayer, Possessed, Blind Illusion, I see some Sacrifice, some DRI, Sentinel Beast, Destruction, all of that. This is the great way to discover bands, you know, from your friends. You just make mixed tapes for each other back then. I don't know if anyone does that now. P people probably share playlists now. So there it is. Number 17, show an album you would like to have on tape or a tape you want on vinyl. I tell you, I would definitely love to have this album on vinyl. This is Paradise Lost with their debut album, Lost Paradise, released in 1990 by Peaceville Records. Actually would love to have both this and their follow-up album, Gothic, on the vinyl format, price and circumstances allowing. Like the death tape, this is also a valuable tape and who knows, maybe I'll sell it off one day it or the other one after I get final copies. There's the cassette with the Peaceville logo. There you go. 
And that J card there, picture of the band, track listing, all that, and lyrics on the back for you. 18, show an 8-track or a VHS tape. And I'll tell you something, I do have one 8-track tape. It is uh, Love Gun by Kiss. I got it from my aunt. Um, I can't find it anywhere. I mean, I just moved into this new place four months back, and I know I have it in a box somewhere, but I just couldn't find it. So we're going to go with the VHS tape instead. You all know this one before. I've talked about it a zillion times. This is The Decline of Western Civilization, Part 2, The Metal Years, the 1988 Penelope Spheres documentary on heavy metal, hard rock, and all of that fantastic movie. Um, I do have a special on this movie, uh, both on the movie itself as well as the soundtrack, and then new albums from all the featured bands. Uh, you should go through my playlist and go find that video because I worked on it really hard. I think you'd really enjoy it. Uh, there's the back there with the mighty Chris Holmes in his pool being drunk and all of that. And the VHS looks like that, in case you've never seen a VHS tape before. Fantastic. It's still in pretty good shape all these years later. I did buy this in 1988. There it is. Decline 2. You should already have seen it. Number 19. Show your second, third, or 23rd tape in your collection. How random, right? So let's go with my third tape. This is Gigi Allen with Antisocial Personality Disorder. It was released in 1990 by Ever Rat Records. It is live and studio material, though it just states live for some reason. Great picture of Gigi there, by the way. Set. Looks like that. And that. Another picture of Gigi there for you. And a little bit of a blurb on the insert for you. Yeah, G.G. Allen. What a kook. And number 20, a double cassette or tape from a box set. Um, I'm going to go with tape from a box set on this one. This is from Under the Guillotine. Uh, it was a box set creator put out in 2021, released by Noise Records. This is the Tormentor demo. It's called End of the World. Uh, in case you don't know, Tormentor was the band's name before they became creator. Simple as that. Oh. I like the detail they went into to mock a blank tape. There. That's pretty fun. Yeah, look at the J card. It's recorded at ZC Studios there. Nothing on the one side. First has the band, credits, and all of that. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, if you've never heard the sort of pre-creator material, Tormentor, good time. There is a bonus uh, question. It says, show a single. I'm going to show you four of them because I did find quite a few, again, moving into a new apartment and opening some boxes up for the first time in 30 years. Uh, these two are actually from the same album. Hold them up together. Exodus here with Objection Overruled, as well as The Lunatic Parade. They're both from Impact is Imminent. Capitol Records. You can see the backs there. Uh, simple enough. Here is the Lunatic Parades cassette. Back. I don't know how much this album really held up for me in the long haul. Uh, I really liked it a lot when it was new. I was doing college radio at the time. Played quite a bit of that. These two singles I played quite a bit. But I don't know. I just haven't really wanted to go back to this album much. But uh, the Exodus singles for you anyways. The other two I have are Metallica. Uh, also from the same album. We have One and Eye of the Beholder. Of course, both of these are from And Justice for All, released in 1988. I think the singles might be from 89. Can't really remember. Um, Eye of the Beholder. Looks like that that. Eye of the Beholder has a cover of Bread Fan, the budgie tune on it. Metallica was pretty big on doing covers on their B-sides. There's the cassette for one, which is very black. In fact, none more black. How about that? And we've got the prints on this one. 
which is uh, it's a Prince of Diamond Head song, I believe it is. Again, cover tune. There it is. So thanks go out to Jason for this thread video. Definitely you should check out both his original video as well as his channel. I'll leave a link in the description of my video so you can check all of that out. So I did have some fun doing this one. It gave me a bit of an excuse to break out some tapes that I hadn't seen in quite a while. I think I actually had to blow dust off of some of them. Uh, maybe this will also make me get off my ass and get that console deck sooner than later. Um, I got a receiver back there. So I might as well hook something else up to it, but you know, maybe enjoy my old tapes again too. Especially some of those old mixtapes I made in the 80s, definitely some good tunes there, and some good memories as well. Speaking of tapes, I might do a dedicated cassette special which will be a bit different from this tag video. I mean, I actually had started working on it quite a while ago, but this kind of reminded me of it, so I don't know, we'll see. Uh, without giving things away, it will be some rather unique tapes, definitely metal, and would likely have some stories behind them. I don't know. Let me know if that vague description appeals to you, and maybe I'll shoot it. We'll see. Of course, if you're also into vinyl of the metal variety, you've definitely come to the right place. My name is Matt. This is the Accusation Network, where each and every week I cover the subject of metal vinyl collecting, as well as classic and modern metal in general. If you like the sound of that, definitely give this video a like. Also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And maybe share my videos with some of your friends. Of course, as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.